welcome Dr. Carol Rattay, Director of the Delaware Division of Public Health. So nice of you to make the time. Thank you so much, Sharon, for having me. And uh, we're back to do some more fact checking about COVID. And I thought we could start with students, K-12. Um, that was a topic I had some teachers on last week, and it's a hot topic. Now, children are wearing masks for the most part at school. Can they contract the virus and can they spread the virus? Yeah, great questions. Um, yeah, so kids can become infected. And um, we also have seen through some studies that um, the CDC has done that uh, kids also can transmit the virus. Now, um, we are seeing certainly less infection among children, um, certainly in comparison to young adults who really are our are, uh, are big spreaders right now. Um, but kids, you know, spent the early time in this pandemic, you know, many at home. And um, additionally, kids are much more likely to have no symptoms. And so, you know, certainly in the early months of this pandemic, we didn't do a lot of testing for asymptomatic people. That was and, my next question, if I may interrupt. Can children have the virus and not know it? Or can anybody have it and not know it? Yeah, and you know, I think that um, early on, certainly one of the uh, times that we spoke, we didn't know how common asymptomatic um, infection was. And we now know not only is it common, um, but asymptomatic people spread the infection. And this is something that's really unique, but also extremely challenging about this infection because you just don't know who has it. And so we really have to all pretend like we all have it, including, including kids. They may be less likely to, to get it and to spread it, but we have to behave as though, you know, everyone, including children, are infected. Wow. So in the beginning, I would go to the supermarket and many people were wearing latex gloves. I don't see that anymore. I see masks. Um, is it true that we should be concerned still about surfaces or is it really respiratory and airborne? Yeah, it is predominantly um, a respiratory virus and it is predominantly spread through close contact um, respiratory spread from one person's you know, mouth and nose to another person's you know, typically that's going to be when they're at a distance for a prolonged period of time for 15 minutes or more. Um, but um, there are other ways, less predominant ways that it can be spread. Um, through contact or surfaces, less so. But you know, if you're around somebody who's sneezing, coughing, and you know, you touch those surfaces, um, it, shortly afterwards, and then you touch your mouth or your eyes, um, it is likely it can be spread that way, but very, very uncommon. So we are less focused on certainly gloves and, um, you know, hyper vigilance around cleaning every surface. Kind of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hand washing, keeping your hands clean is important. Keeping your hands away from your face is important. But what is most important by far are the, wearing those face coverings. That really is um, what is going to make the biggest difference between getting this, keeping this under control or not. Couple more questions. How long is a person contagious? And I know a couple of people who have had the virus, thank God. The symptoms were mild, pretty mild. Are they still contagious? Can they get it again? Yeah. So how long is a person symptomatic and how long can they can, or I'm sorry, how long is a person contagious? I think is a really important question. Um, you are contagious if you have symptoms uh, for a, you know, a good 24 hours um, after, especially fever. So if you have fever as one of your symptoms, um, if you become 
afebrile or without a fever for 24 hours, we say, then you can go back. And if you are go back to work or um, you know, and you you're are no, no longer considered, contagious. you're no longer considered contagious if you've been 24 hours without a fever, or without serious symptoms. For people who have prolonged symptoms, which last for longer periods of time, um, it appears that they do shed the virus, you know, during that symptomatic time. So for some people, their um, contagious period is longer than others. Now, for those on the other side who have no symptoms at all, we say, you know, you need to be in isolation for 10 days after the date that your test was collected. And um, so if you, you know, got your swab two days ago and you find out you're positive today, then you've got another eight days where you need to st stay in isolation whether you have symptoms or not. See. Can you get reinfected if you're, you have it, you recover? Yeah, so there's still a lot we don't know about this virus. There have been cases that, um, where it does appear like individuals have recovered, tested negative, and then become infected again. And it's not clear why that's the case. Um, whether for some reason their immune response was less and um, or, and that's another thing that scientists are really looking very closely at, you know, how strong is our immune response to this and how long does it last? So, you know, we're still learning a lot about this. Reinfection does appear uncommon, but again, it has happened. Um, two more questions, if you have time. Of course. How often should a person be tested? I think I've been tested three times. Thank God, negative, all three. But how often? I mean, should I go again in another month? Or, And then the final, final question, it is the fall when people get cold, some people get flu. How do you know when it's something ordinary versus the virus? Yeah, um, great questions. So, and it depends. So how often you should get tested? Depends on a few things. Um, some people are just kind of routinely incorporating this into, you know, get tested on a monthly basis, which is not a bad idea. Certainly when you have symptoms, and, and now we do say that includes, you know, certainly um, flu type symptoms um, or any, of course, COVID symptoms, um, but even like a runny nose or an upset stomach, um, if you have those symptoms, should get tested. If you've been exposed to somebody who's positive, you should get tested. Um, ideally, around 10 days after you've been exposed to them, um, that helps you know, you know, um, you know, if you're not going to turn positive as, as soon as you've been exposed to somebody. So if you wait 10 or so days, that can help you feel more confident that you did not get infected from them. So if you have symptoms, if you've been exposed, if you are going to spend time with somebody who's at higher risk. So let's say you have a relative who's um, at a long-term care facility and, and um, you're going to visit them, definitely get tested before you go visit them. And, and that will give you the confidence that you're not bringing an infection in. Um, there are high risk um, jobs that we have this on our website, you know, certainly if you're a healthcare uh, worker, first responder, teachers as well, we're saying teachers could, should get tested at least once a month. Childcare providers should get tested once a month, just so you know. Um, but my family during Labor Day weekend, I wasn't with them, but um, my husband and daughter went to the beach. I saw them hugging family members. And so I said, okay, you guys get tested. So. You know, those things happen and um, it, it, tests are widely available now. I love the home test that anybody can sign up for. It comes to your home, easy to do. You send it back and uh, you find out quickly. Oh, wow. We should uh, publicize that then, the home test. Is there a link or a website for it? Yes, yeah, so if you go to our coronavirusde.gov uh, website, um, and you go to testing, um, just click on the home test and anyone who is in Delaware, lives or works in Delaware, can um, get the home test sent to your home. 
it's usually there within 24 hours. Um, you, it, it's very easy to do. You have to spit into a, a little test tube and send it back. And uh, again, it's really very simple. If you have symptoms, it's better to get tested right away um, at one of our uh, testing sites. Uh, Wal at our Walgreens sites, we get um, a quick turnaround, but um, the home test is a great option. Thank you so much for your time. And I, I guess the bottom line is the virus is still very active among us. Wear a mask, wear a mask, wear a mask, and wash your hands, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are seeing increases in cases. And so face covering, I mean, it is the most important thing that we can all do. We're seeing spread in households. So we all have to, again, be aware, you know, if we have household members who've been out interacting or in crowds, um, you know, we, we should keep a distance and wear a face covering until we know that they're negative. Also, as the weather is getting colder, I, I just really wanna make sure that people are really keeping in mind, there's a huge difference between indoor and outdoor. And so outdoors is always going to be safer. Um, indoors is um, where we see a lot more spread. It's easier to spread. And the more people you have in an indoor environment, the more likely you're gonna have aerosolization of the infection. So we all have to be very, very careful. House parties, um, you know, a lot of our infections are coming from people who've been to house parties. So we just, we have to be careful about crowds and indoors and wear face coverings um, as much as humanly possible. Well, I will check back with you in a while. I hope we don't have to keep having to have these conversations every three months, but uh, very much appreciated. And um, we'll post your website and keep up the great work. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking with you. All righty. Take care now. Thank you.